Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Copilot Learning Hub. Okay, topic du jour, every, every jour, um, Microsoft 365 Copilot, right? Big topic. All of you ask about it. But now with agents. So we have Jeremy with us today to explain what exactly are Microsoft 365 Copilot agents? How do we use them? And what is the difference between this kind of agent building thing versus the Azure AI agent service building thing? Hi, Jeremy. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for joining us. No, you're welcome. I'm really hoping to demystify some things today. I love it. So please introduce yourself, who you are, what you do. Yeah, so I'm Jeremy Thake. I'm a group product manager in the developer experience side of Microsoft 365 Copilot. Mm -hmm. um, we're very much focused on how agents can help improve productivity of all the users out there using Microsoft 365. And um, I personally have run a group that works on the pro developer side of how you build agents, but can also talk to agents at a much generic level as well. And here I am. I love that. Yeah. So a lot of tools, of course, like no code, low code, pro code, and Jeremy's team covers all of them for Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is awesome. So can you tell us, first of all, just some framing, um, when would someone use Microsoft 365 agent, Microsoft 365 Copilot agent compared to using Azure AI agent service? Yeah, good question. I think there's a bunch of decisions that comes into it. The first one being, if you're already using Microsoft 365 mm -hmm. and the AI solution you're trying to build needs to take advantage of M365 data, mm -hmm. if you build an agent inside of Microsoft 365 mm -hmm. Copilot or M365 Copilot for us to show, mm -hmm. um, then you automatically get access to that data, mm -hmm. whether it's calendar, mail, contacts, files, Teams chats, that's all within the scope of Microsoft 365 Copilot. So if you need that graph nice. data, which is, as Jeremy explained so nicely, chats, emails, calendar, all of these things that's within your Microsoft 365 tenant, if you want to lean into it, this is the place to build, build an agent. Right. I got you. And so the agents have access right now to files, and over the coming months, we're just rolling out more and more of those capabilities into it. Um, and so a lot of the agents we see business want to build relies on that data. Right. Um, it could be summarize the week's progress on this particular project, mm -hmm. and it's going to use everything you've said in mail, everything you've said in Teams, what you've said in meeting transcripts, mm -hmm. what's in a thousand spec documents that are out there or product documents or something, mm -hmm. and it's going to make that summary there and there. Mm -hmm. If you were over in Azure land, mm -hmm. you could do it. You'd have to move all that data into yes. Azure AI or search. Some weird connector thing. And then, how, or a connector, and then you build on top of your own um, fr uh, framework and then your own uh, model and then put it in, in a chat experience. That's right. This is more on Rails. Yeah. So it's like we're focusing on that M365 data. We give you the orchestrator. You've got the model there. Mm -hmm. You've got the experience inside of mm -hmm. m365.cloud. We've changed it so many times. Change the so, URL, yeah. Um, it's also in Teams yeah. when you click on Copilot in Teams. Yes. It's in Outlook mm -hmm. and it's in Word, PowerPoint, Excel. Yep. And you can ask that Copilot and at mention your agents in, in all yes. those different experiences. So it's if you were thinking of kind of like a IaaS, PaaS, SaaS mm -hmm. of 10 years ago conversation about yeah. Azure, mm -hmm. this is the same thing. We're at that SaaS level. Yes. But we still have a fair amount of the ability to break open and write code if you want to yeah. or stay on the rails in a yeah. builder in a browser as well. So it's very in line with your work. If you're already doing work over here, which most of the world honestly does, just use this to start. Yeah. And, yeah. and the nice thing is, is if you do want to use Azure AI as well, you can bolt it in. Oh. So you can bring your own models, you can bring your own orchestrator, and you can surface up your agents from that world yeah. inside of this experience as well, which is a nice balance. Yes. Um, this just gets you there faster in that space. Yes. But you can also connect in data as well. So you can, if you have an API sitting somewhere yes. and you want to pull in, like we have one where it's like it, we pull from GitHub all the issues. Yes. So I can ask my agent, what are my top issues for my team? It'll call out to the GitHub API yes. and pull that back in yes. and reason over it and give me an answer. So yes. we can bring external data in um, but the beauty is is when we bring that in it's overlaid with the m365 data as well and then i get a nice informed answer right. based on both worlds or multiple external endpoints. i think that's powerful because you have your external data but it also has the context of your own work correct and so and it's amazing all the github issues jeremy's team's github issues right yeah. and 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 you can start to steer those agents into more i use a word like macro tasks yeah. so in we call it mainline copilot. Mainline. So when I hit copilot in Teams or in m365.cloud.microsoft's website uh, or Outlook and mm -hmm. Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, 
um, that mainline first run experience of Copilot, where I'm not in the context of an agent, I can ask it things, yeah. but it's going to go look everywhere. Yes. Whereas if I build an agent, mm -hmm. I can give an instruction that says, I only want you to look here. Yeah. And then whenever I ask questions in that, it's very more scope, more macro level right. of what I want to do. And so you can steer the model and the orchestrator to kind of answer it a little bit more how you want it to, rather than going, I've got you know, Everything. Jeremy's whole knowledge yeah. in here and I'm going to rabbit hole over here. The agent allows you to kind of steam Narrowed. in and be a bit more I love careful. That. Yeah. All right. Show us how it works. I'm so curious. Yeah. So now I've hand waved and yeah. talked about it. Hand waves in direction of it. Yeah. And so this is the Copilot experience in the browser. This is the one I use the most mm -hmm. because it gives me like a full screen without any of my team's chats on the left hand side. So you can't be nosy about what I'm doing in real life. I'm so nosy about that. Yeah. I, I've seen you at my show before. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, and so you can see how we can ask lots of questions and best just to do a demo first. Yes. So the nice thing about this is I can forward slash and get context IQ up. Oh, I and like I happen those. to have a deck here that I've been using when I meet with customers and talk to them about agents yeah. in a nice visual way. Mm -hmm. But now I have that deck. That's just living in SharePoint somewhere, yep. right? I'm not having to index it somewhere. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. there. And then I can just simply do at mention and start typing. Mm -hmm. And then I have a demo one and I have the real one. But I believe this is the one that's going to do, do me most justice. And now you'll see that I'm chatting with that presentation agent. Uh -huh. But I'm in the context of this particular file. Yes. And now I can say, uh, can you give me feedback on each of the slides this deck. Oh, that's interesting. Right. Okay. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to go look at that that PowerPoint. Yep. And, you know, this is a nice shiny deck with, you know, our fearless leader here and okay. a bunch of slides that talks about what M Microsoft 365 Copilot is and what access to information it has and mm -hmm. notion of skills and knowledge within this deck. Mm -hmm. But if I go back here and have a look, oh, what it's done is yeah. for every single slide, it's given mm -hmm. me a you know, here's the current context, a little bit of feedback on, on slides based on some instructions I've given this agent that's, you know, my opinion. Yeah. I actually use this with my team. Yeah. So I've got some junior folks on here that mm -hmm. are still learning presentation style. Totally. And I kept finding myself referring to the same, like Jeremy's rules. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to write an instruction yeah. in an agent and then they can use the agent themselves I and run through the review. So it's like so now virtual Jeremy's good. opinion on the PowerPoint deck. Jeremy's feedback in real time on whether it's a document or a, or a PowerPoint. That's really cool. Yeah. And so like even the intro slide here, it's like, you know, ensure the speaker's name and title is prominent by the font's too small. And there's a bunch of really nice things that it does in here. Um, and what that looks like if I'm actually building that agent. Yes. Um, I now want to build this agent, yeah, to be clear. So is, I want to see. Everyone that has access to Microsoft 365 Copart can see all their agents on the right-hand side. They can get more agents yeah. from the, either the store that their company manages or the public store. And if I click Create Agent, we go into this Agent Builder Experience. And I can quickly go over to my View My Agents. And in this environment, I've got a few. And when I go over to my presentation agent here and have a look at the editing of it, mm -hmm you'll see that there's some instructions. And effectively what this is saying is like, you're a declarative agent that helps give guidance on creating better presentations. Oh. Now I've read a few books in my time and yeah. there's a really good book called Presentation Zen, which is in like its third edition right now. Oh. And I took some of the rules out, the five, five, five rule, you know, no more than five lines, no more than five words on a line, yeah. no more than five slides in a row with that much dense text, that kind of thing. Yeah. And the model uses that to make that guidance that you saw in that, in that prompt. So That's it's cool. super, super useful. Mm -hmm. Um, so in, in, in this can be shared, so I can go here and share that agent with you right now. Right. You could go get one of your presentation decks and mention the agent. I can't and can't wait to hear feedback. It's going to say, stop stealing pictures off the internet, Donna. Like, mm -hmm, that's right. Um, and so, yeah, so this is a very, very minor, mm -hmm. light touch, kind of just using instructions. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you saw I at mentioned it in, but I can also just go to my agent here and see some starter prompts here and 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 see what's going on. I love the starter prompts, aspect. by the way. I think that's so clever. Just well, it nudges people. them, right? Because yeah. you can see even in what my environment, the agent do? I've got quite a few. Yeah. And, you know, I, unless I know what kind of things I can mm -hmm. ask it, um, it can get a little bit second guessy there. That's and cool. so, yeah, this is really nice. The discovery is good with the at mention. Mm -hmm. I can either push it, give it a nudge with that forward slash the context IQ to ask it about Sebastian, who happens to have a different photo. He must be playing in this environment as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like particular Excel documents, you can dig straight in or even into meeting transcripts of meetings and things. So there's lots of ways that you can kind of take advantage of Microsoft 365 data. I love that. And then, and then wrap over. it in an agent. So what I find very interesting about this is you can change the context to be as narrow scoped 
as you want, even just down to the file. Right. That's cool. Yeah, and it's not just files, right? Like it can be all sort of other bits and pieces sure, as well. Sure. So just as another example, um, we were working with um, a company and they have a bunch of policy documents mm -hmm. that actually don't live in Microsoft 365. They're not in SharePoint, they're not in OneDrive. Mm -hmm. They have an HRMS system that's outside of our domain, okay. but they wanted the ability to do things like, you know, what is the bring your own device policy, BYOD, mm -hmm. um, in, in their organization. And so in this case, I'm still in Microsoft 365, mm -hmm. Copilot. I'm using this policy agent, mm -hmm. and this policy agent has been steered to not only look at Microsoft 365 data, but also data from other systems. And so this is actually an external um, piece. And if I clicked on it, I'm not running this locally on my machine, mm -hmm. but that's a local host website just for the purpose of the demo. Yeah. Um, but that can come in that way. Mm -hmm. And the way we see that, if I go over to create an agent, mm -hmm. is when I go to my policy agent here, is as well as being able to steer it with just those instructions, mm -hmm. I can get knowledge from other places. Uh -huh. And in this instance, I've used a graph connector mm -hmm. and we have all the policies ingested into the graph from an external system. And now my policy agent is using not only M365 data, mm -hmm. but it's also in this case being steered to look at that connected data from that HRMS system as well. I love it. It's yeah. an old school graph connector, but now it's being used. Right. Just, so everything yeah. we use graph connectors for with search yes. can now be used by these agents in Agent Builder and Copilot Studio and also in um, Visual Studio Code as well. If I want to write these kind of things in ProCode, mm -hmm. I totally can too. I love that. Yeah. I think this is really cool because... It's such a good personal productivity tool or your team productivity tool, like you said. Right. I always thought M365 Copilot is a solo activity, but it can be a small team sport. Yeah. Or it's very useful for your team to have maybe an agent that helps all of you do similar kind of tasks. Yeah. And the, another good one just to show like mm -hmm. some of the other aspects of it is um, my Ask Jeremy one. I'm sure you get this a lot. Donna, what do you do? What does your group do? Yeah. Yes, um, and so I have a bunch of instructions here on like providing detailed anchor answers to questions about the charter of my group's work. Mm -hmm. And in this case, from a knowledge aspect, what I'm actually doing is I'm using a SharePoint site where all of my specs, my group charter, uh, yeah. um, any of the design documents I have. And so it's able to actually answer those questions scoped just to that SharePoint site. And now the nice thing is I actually have this in my email signature. Um, because all I do is I take that share link mm -hmm. and then people can just go there and do that. Nice. And then actually if someone IMs me on Teams now, I just at mention Ask Jeremy and it goes, goes for like that. That's right. In Teams, you can call your agent and say, someone's like, Jeremy, can you explain how we do this? Yeah. Your agent can help answer this. And, and what I'm showing here is these are the most basic examples with Agent Builder of just getting at SharePoint knowledge, some external knowledge with graph connectors. Um, what we do have coming, and you'll see it's very obviously coming soon here, mm. is Actions. I love that. I love that. mean Power Platform Connectors, mm. so I can get at third-party data for yeah. API calls. That's right. If you're in pro developer land right now, you're in Visual Studio Code, yes. you can do this today with our toolkit. That's right. And you'll be able to connect into GitHub and every other API if you have an open API description. Yeah. It's very, very you're straightforward to do, If too. you've got yeah. that API description, then you can do all the things you could do in ProCode before. If you are a power platform person, then you already know there's what, 1600 connectors or right, some of them. Plug them. into, yeah. yeah. And so a lot of them are there already. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you'll see that we have a whole capability section here mm -hmm. with things like image generating code interpreter. The yes. best demo I can show you there is uh, the fact that you can kind of go look at an Excel file, creating columns based on these different bits and, mm -hmm. and it'll go away and write the Python and execute that in the background for you and do that work. Mm -hmm. um, and so it'll give you that file and you can download it. But one thing we have been seeing a lot of is um, that one, which is generating a plot of a chart yes. based on data. So I could say, mm -hmm. what are my top issues in GitHub for my team and rank them yes. and give them the weight. And then I could say, now plot that on a chart yeah. and Copilot will do that for me directly here using that code, code interpreter function. So, I'm so happy about this right now. There's some nice things that we can do here with agents. Very, I very like quickly. not having to go to Excel to get a data stream, have to go to Excel and make it myself. This is a job for Copilot. I'll look at it. It's yeah. a beautiful one too. And so you can have it inspect Excel files and report on charts on the fly here. And so I use this a lot when it comes to reporting up uh, my management chain. Yeah. Because I have access to data, it's living in SharePoint, it's living in these graph connected pieces of information. And with Code Interpreter there, we can do these really nice things. And as I say, with the starter prompts, you know, we can even kind of 
steer a user down that path to uh, make that a thing. I love this because every month, I'm sure you have this, you have this, um, monthly business review. That's right. The bane of everyone's existence. I want to automate the entire I, thing. I want to end. automate the whole thing. Yeah. And rather than spending half a day gathering the data, parsing the data, putting it into like charts and graphs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Let my agent do this work. I love this. Yeah. It's making me a lot more productive on a day to day and um, automating some of the things that, you know, people we do in meetings. And I think it's just great because that way you can get more work done yeah. and these more repetitive things we can mm -hmm. kind of automate and bundle in agents as those macro tasks. I love it because this gives us time to actually go focus on learning new things to solve bigger problems. That's right. Rather than like give status updates every week, which is... Nobody in the history of the world yeah. has ever liked this. I think it, it, you pause and you go, what, what, what am I doing repetitively? I like, could just spend a little bit of time investing in instructions and mm -hmm. plugging sources together. And it's really nice. And so anyone with a Mike, or Microsoft 365 license mm -hmm. can use Copilot now with the web, but they can build these agents. Yeah. There are some things that only work if you've got the full paid license of Microsoft sure. 365 Copilot or if you've got, you've got consumption billing on within your tenant, but you can at least get started. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing here is, is that if you have a, a Microsoft 365 developer program tenant, yeah. you can do that for free by signing up. And there's some entitlement roles in the FAQ there on like yeah. who can get these tenants right yeah. now. Um, but there's a lot of people who can just jump in and start playing today, even if I did not know, you know your tenants yeah. kind of locked down because of, yeah. you know, you're a big company and they don't want you just playing in production. They want you to go play somewhere else. They're like, go play in traffic. That's right. Hello, welcome to traffic. Okay, this is great because you can actually go try it out, see if you use it, see how much you use it before going out and getting the M365 Copilot license. That's right, yeah. That's clever. I do like that. Okay, because it gets more people's hands on it before they say, okay, I'm ready to commit for, you know, a year of this thing. That's right, right here. Yep. Okay. Totally right. I love that. This has been eye-opening. I thought I knew about M365 Copilot agents. I just thought of 16 scenarios, namely managing my team's budget. There we go. And <laughs> doing her monthly MBRs and all kinds of things that I'm not going to do anymore. I'm going to make my agent do it. My boss, cover your ears. Yeah. Jeremy, this has been such a joy. Thank you so much for joining me. Good to catch up. Of course. All right, everyone. We will see you next time at Copilot Learning Hub.